Hello everybody, it's Donna. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today's video is going to be how I put together this basket card. I'm calling it the basket of peonies card. It's actually a... Uh, it doesn't open up like a normal card. It, go, it goes in the envelope flat, but when you pull it out it kind of pops up and it's going to stand by itself. It has several layers of flowers in there. The back piece comes out so you can write your sentiment. There's also enough room if you want to to attach a gift card there. The only sentiment on the front of the card is going to be a happy birthday. Now this card I'm going to be making now is not going to have a happy birthday because it's going to be a get well card because I think most hospitals don't allow you to bring in plants or flowers for people so this is kind of a great alternative because it does look so nice when it's just sitting there. It's quite substantial. It is a 5x7 card more or less. It'll fit in a 5x7 envelope but depending on how many embellishments or how much embellishments you want to put on the card it is going to be quite thick. So if you're going to make your 5x7 envelope to fit it, I would personally make it and put this inside before you glue it down just so you can have what they call like a puffy envelope. Or you could put it in, make a box card envelope for it. But either way, it's quite um, substantial and it, and it is really pretty. It looks almost like a gift in itself. Okay, so I did do some prep work just because this is quite involved. You will need to one piece of Whisper White. Well, you're going to need a lot of Whisper White, but this piece is four and a half by three inches, and I just rounded all corners. This is just for the back piece of the, the card. You, you will need two pieces of Sahara Sand. Now, you can do your own colors, but this is what I'm using. Two pieces of Sahara Sand, four inches by one and a half inches, and I'm rounding just the bottom, two, and this will be for the just the front to make the basket kind of had some kind of lacy type of edge on it. And I did one for the front, one for the back. I used a scrap of Whisper White to stamp out this sentiment. Now this sentiment is from the Gorgeous Posies uh, stamp set, which is in the annual catalog. And I I cut it out twice using these new. Well, they're new to me. I just got them yesterday, as a matter of fact. Uh, stitch, sweet, stitch those sweetly dies. I used one of these, the little one that's in here. And I stamped it, cut it out, and then I cut another white one for the back, just so I could have it backed. And then I knew it was pretty sturdy. And then I sandwiched it, a toothpick in between the two, and then just glued them shut. And that's going to be my little thing to go in the pot, or the basket. You will also need two squares of Cajun Craze, four inches square. You will need two more pieces of Cajun Craze, three and a half by three inches, and you're going to score them down. I'll show you, it's easier on my scoreboard. Every half inch. So along the three inch side, you're going to score at half an inch, one inch, one and a half inch, two, and two and a half. So you're going to do that to both those pieces and that's going to form the sides of the basket so that it's an accordion fold and it's going to pop up when it comes out of the envelope. I'm just going to put those aside for a second. Then you will need, to, these are just like beams that are going to go across the accordion so you can put your embellishments on them. These are roughly three and an eighth by three quarter inch. It doesn't really matter how precisely how wide it is. I don't think you'd want it too wide, but um, you know, if you had scraps that are half an inch, that would probably do fine too. And roughly three by an eighth. Now it's, you might have to trim these down after you've pla placed the accordion because they have to fit in between them. So you might have to trim them a little bit. Then you will need almost a full sheet of Whisper White to make all the flowers, to stamp out all the flowers and color them in the leaves. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make, stamp out the uh, flowers and the leaves. This is probably the longest part because I stamped them out. I need three of the bigger ones, three of these big ones. I need one, two, three, one, two, three, 
four of the medium white posies and then I'm going to use just two of the small ones as well. And then I'm just stamping out a few leaves uh, depending on how many you want on your finished card. Okay, so we're going to do that now with Memento Tuxedo Black because we are going to be coloring them in using our blends. I'm using the new uh, Magenta Madness. I think it might help if I put that on a block. Oh, there it is. I'm using the new Magenta Madness for the uh, peonies. I'm going to use the new Just Jade for the leaves. As well as just the dark Mango Melody just for the center of the peonies. Then I'm going to, after they're all colored, I'm going to take Wink Stella and go over top of just the flowers, not the leaves. And then I'm going to actually glue some clear glitter to the center of the flowers. You can see it there. It's just a little touches, but add a little bit more glitter to it. This is our Dazzling Diamonds, but we don't sell them anymore. But any type of gl clear, sparkly glitter would do fine. I'm just going to fast forward doing this part because you don't really need to see me do it. Okay, there they are all stamped out. Now, these all will be die cut as well from uh, the, let me show you the stamp set that I did, I used for it. This is the prize peony. So th this one has an coordinating dies, the peony dies, and we are gonna have to cut them out using them. Now you could cut them up by hand if you don't have the dies, and they're pretty simple. They're not, they're not difficult. Uh, but for me, I am going to die cut them first and color second. Most people color first and die cut second. My eyesight's not great, so I find by having a very distinct black line, I can line the dies up easier than after it's colored. I also, it would be really disappointing to me if I didn't get lined up perfectly or it shifted and I had too much of a white border on one side, not enough on the other, you know what I'm talking about, right? then I would have to start it over and then I wasted my coloring. Now most people prefer to color first because it's one sheet. I just personally have chosen not to do that. So I'm going to cut, cut these out. I'm going to color them and then I'm going to put the Wink Stella and the Dazzling Diamonds on them and then I will be back. Okay, I'm back. I have colored all my pieces. I have put Wink Stella on all of them. I have put the glitter, the clear sparkly glitter in the center of the flowers. You can see it better on this one. They're nice and sparkly and pretty. I didn't do anything with the leaves, we just left them. I'm just going to push those off to the side for a second, or for a little bit. Now I'm going to take my two pieces of four inch square uh, Cajun craze. And I'm just using my scoreboard just to mark something because I need to cut it off a bit in order to make this shape with the basket. So on each end, I'm gonna, just going to score, not really score, I actually should use a pencil is probably better than a, than a score tool, even though you could. I don't really actually want to score. I just kind of want to mark where the three quarter inch is on this side and three and a quarter on that side. And I'm going to do that to both. And now I have these. So now what we have to do is we have to cut from that mark that we made to that corner. So from that mark down to that corner and on this side from that mark down to that corner. Now you can just draw a line with a ruler and cut it with your scissors if you like. I'm going to take mine over to my trimmer and I'm going to do it over there. Okay, and there's the two pieces. Now they're starting to look like baskets. Now I want to emboss them with, I'm using a um, embossing folder that is actually retired. I am using, oh here it is right here, the basket weave embossing folder. It's retired, but you can use something else similar. 
Uh, you can you leave it plain you don't need to emboss it but this really made it look like the basket that I wanted now I wanted some definition and so you can see there's some color in there so what I'm going to do is I am going to put ink on the top of this embossing folder so that's the top of the embossing folder the piece will go here and the ink's going to be here so the ink is going to get pressed into the top of that I'm going to use Cajun Craze because I just want to do like kind of a tone on tone type look. I do not want to press this too hard because I do not want to get it right into the pieces like I did down here. Not that it would matter, it would just give more definition. Then I'm going to just simply place my piece right there, line that up as straight as I can, close it, and then I'm going to send it through my Big Shaw machine or whatever that kind of machine you have to have. Okay, so that added a lot of color. It added the embossing but as well as the color into the squares in the background. Now I am going to wipe this off just because I got extra ink where I didn't want it to be. And then once once I'm done, I will just take this to the sink. It'll be a lot easier because these little spots in there, it's hard to get the ink out of them. And I'm going to do it again for the second piece. Okay, and there's the second piece. Okay, we just want to push those off to the side for a second. I've got ink everywhere now. Now for these two Sahara sand pieces, I wanted to add, on this you can see I had a little, kind of a little bit of a trim, just to make it more look like lacy. And I didn't want it completely white, so I think Sahara sand kind of balanced that need. Okay, this is from the Peony dies. This is just a little border die that I came with. So I'm going to line it up right along the edge. I'm going to use some removable tape, just to tape it in place, and then I'm going to send it through my die cut machine okay and there's the two pieces I'm just going to slide this one back before I lose it now we're going to take those two pieces that we scored and we're going to according and fold them so we're just going to go back and forth just like as if you're doing a normal accordion fold that I'm sure we've all done. Now I can't find my score tool, my bone folder. Okay, as I was saying, we're going to fold these in accordion fold. So we're just going to go back and forth. And then use something to really burnish those edges down. Now just to make it easier, I'm going to attach these to the front of my card. I am going to use, I think for this one I'll just use glue. I just don't want glue to, I want it on the edge up here but not all the way down it. Because it's going, there's going to be a little part that's showing and I don't want that to have glue all over. Apparently I have issues with this glue. Okay, so the top is exactly the same as this. If they're both four inches, they both start at four inches. The basket part just changes, obviously, because it gets more narrow. Just want to make sure it's even. And then do the same thing with this one. I don't want to use a lot of glue in this project because I actually prefer glue most of the time, but this could be a little, uh, if there's any glue stuck out on the inside or seeps out in the inside, it could actually hold it closed and you don't want that. I've got a little bit of glue there, but I have a special eraser that will take that off. Okay. 
any more I can get later. And now we need to attach the side pieces. This is going to hold the two together. The card is not standing up from this. The card is just standing up. If you look on the bottom, it's standing up just from the card itself. So we need to attach these to the outside of, of uh, one of them. Now for this, you see this raw edge right here. I want that pointing inwards. So there's two raw edges and I want them pointing inwards. So it's going to go like this on that one. And then there's two raw edges there and it's going to point inwards on this side. So they're both going to, they're going to sit like this. They're not going to be totally at the edge because if I did that, then you might be able to see it. So we don't want it totally at the edge. They don't have to be lined up perfectly together. It'll work, but just, you don't want to be right at the edge. I'm going to use, um, I think I'm going to use some, just some tape, some double sided adhesive for this. Again, simply because I don't want glue sticking out or seeping out anywhere. Seems to be the day for phone calls. Okay, so I'm going to put the double sided adhesive on these pieces. And I'm going to put it on both sides, even though we're going to attach the first side, one of them, one piece first. You'll see what I mean in a second. But then the tape is at least on there. Okay, just really want to make sure that tape is stuck on there. You could use glue. I actually normally would use glue because I, I have a little bit better faith in glue but as I said I don't want this sticking um, or seeping out okay so this is going to the raw edges are facing inwards so this is the one I need to release first and then we're going to attach it to this edge now it just needs to be towards the edge. It does not have to be um, in the center or anything like that. It just needs to be close to the edge without going over it. And there we go. There's the one down. And now we're going to put the other one on the other side. And again with these raw edges pointing in. So I know I need to have this one. Perfect. Now for these two, these are what's going to attach to the, uh, you're going to attach your inside, these elements to, are those little, um, they're just like little beams almost. So here you can see how you have two mountains there on each side. So if this is, we're assuming this is going to be the front. So you're going to attach it to the back of the first mountain. This could be the front, doesn't matter. Don't be too precise because nobody's going to really see it. And then you're going to attach this one to the back of the second mountain. Roughly in the same space and then it's going to close. So if you found that your piece was too, this one I got really close to the edge so I should have lots of room. And I think that'll be fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to attach a little bit more of this red tape. Attach the first one, or the one closest to the front first. Take off this the tape liner. And I do not want any tape over the edge. If I do happen to make the tape tape bigger, you just squish it over so it's back onto the back side. And then I can just slide it in there. Kind of hold it down, make sure it's getting caught. It doesn't only really have to be lined up with the top or in like that. 
just makes it easier if it is closer and then press down and then that's going to stick it right down together and there there's the first beam now I'm going to do the same thing with the second beam again on the mountain fold but on the back I don't think it really matters if it's back or the front just different type of dimension I guess and there we go and now we have two of them now I find it easier to put the back piece on just because I need to measure it. I don't know if I said, but this is going to fit into a five by seven envelope. So I want to make sure that I don't go taller than seven inches. So it's easier for me to put the, do the back piece first to make sure it's not going to be taller than seven. And then I can do the inside part. This is the only part I found a little bit difficult to get it perfect because I do want them kind of lined up as best I can. And there we go. So now it will fold flat to go into an envelope, but it also stands up. And you have lots of room in there to add anything you want, really. Okay. Now we're going to take this piece, this piece of Whisper White that we did. This is the part that's going to be for the back. And as I said, it's easiest to have that in there so we can make sure that our whole piece, let me see if I can show you, is not going to be taller than seven inches. So this is going in the right in the back as far as it'll go. And it just kind of sits in there. It's not, it's just because it's wider than the bottom of the, the basket so it's not going to go down any further than that but I have seven inches is up until there right there and that's where we want to put our things now for this one I chose just one of these and then two of these small ones off to the side now I think in my sample I may have used dimensionals well I only used dimensionals for the top one I think we'll do the same thing. So we'll put the two smaller pieces on first. I don't have to worry too much about it being over seven because it's not going to be until I put that on. So we'll take this off and we'll attach these two smaller pieces. Okay, for this one I am going to use just a little bit of glue. You could use glue dots or a tape runner, but I think we'll just use the glue. I just don't need glue all over it because it's going to be um, off the white card. And again, that would just defeat the purpose. There is any glue showing in the back. You can use your adhesive remover to get rid of it because you really don't want any glue where you where you, where it's not meant to be. And then I'm going to have this one, which I'm going to put on a pop dot, but this is where I really do have to measure it. Also, if you wanted some of the leaves before, you may want to put down some of the leaves before you put, before you put, like this one, I end up putting the leaf on the back and I didn't really want to do that. I probably just wouldn't bother putting a leaf there, actually. I kind of did overkill on some of my leaves. This one, because I'm putting it up using a pop dot I will be able to slide some behind okay so this is the mark for the seven inches so I just want to make sure my piece doesn't go bigger than that or beyond that I do want this to have dimension throughout it so I did add dimensionals for this one come back later with leaves if we so wish okay so the front of the card gets these 
medium sized ones. We're going to leave those off the side because now we're going to work on the middle part. The middle part has the bigger ones. I put one on the, the furthest back piece. I put one of these. We're just going to test out how it looks. And I do want it fairly high as long as I have something to stick that to. Okay, I'm going to use, um, I think I'm going to use the tape runner on this. For the same reason, I just don't want glue to go where I don't want it to go. So I'm going to, I don't know, oh, here we'll just use this. I can always get it off. I just don't want glue on my surface or adhesive on my surface. I want to make sure there is no glue showing or tape really on the other side. And I'm happy with the placement. I can just push it down and it is all on that piece so I don't have to worry. Okay, so that's that one. Then the next two are actually going to go on the front of the one in front of it. I might put one on the front and one on the back just to give it even more dimension, but we'll see. You might have to cut off that, like this leaf here. If you're using this set, I mean, you can use, there's lots of different flowers that you could use. I think I do. I think I need to cut off that little leaf. I like that where it is. How much space did I have? Okay, so this one extends kind of below, so I'm just going to cut a little bit off because I don't want to get glue on that or adhesive on that. Do you see what I mean? I'm trying to get it to keep the adhesive not like on this part right here. You don't want the adhesive on there and not showing because it'll it will stick close to it for you, and you don't really want that. like that. And it is stuck perfectly. We can take that out actually now. We don't need that one. And then this one's going to be attached to the front sorry, beside it. Or you can attach it to the back if you want more. Which is dimension. Which is what I think I'm going to do. I'm thinking I'm going to attach it to the back of that one. Back of that beam. But you can do whatever whatever you fancy. Now I could cut that butt off. But I don't really want to. I kind of like that bud there. I don't know what did I do with this one. No, oh, the bud's still there on that one. So I think we're going to leave that bud there. But this one I'm going to attach the back. So I'm going to put the glue on the front or the tape on the front. I'm just going to see how far down I have to go. And I think it should be fine. I don't think any of it's going to sh going to come out. Okay, I'm going to take off this spot. It's just causing it to be too much high, too high, too much high, too high for me. Nobody's ever going to know. Now I might be able to use that bud later. Another interruption. Okay, so I cut that off and now I'm going to try to get this just a little bit, that's better, much better, a little bit lower. I think I'm going to actually cut some of this off too. Okay, one more time. Okay. 
There we go. I think I like that. However, I do have, where's that bud? Here it is. I think we're going to attach that. Why not? We've made it. Might as well use it. Now for the front, we have these three left. So we, I wanted some of the lace to be showing. Okay, now we have the leaves that we can tuck in. Now on this one, I kind of went a little, I think, maybe a little bit overboard on the leaves. But do whatever makes you happy. Okay, there we go. I think I used up all my leaves. I know I have more stamped out if I wanted to, but I think we'll just leave it at that. I don't know how many I used. I think I used five. Yeah, I think I used five in total. Okay, now we need to put our little get well in there. Decide where we want placement. Probably a glue gun would probably be better for this part. Normally you have it in the middle of the flowers somewhere, right? Or your plant, I guess. Okay, it took me a while to decide where I wanted the get well sign. And now all I have left to do is, oh, I have a butterfly. I thought that would add a nice, like this one I had the, a different butterfly. This is from an old DSP, I just cut it out. But I thought that would add a nice little element. It's kind of offsets the colors because it's more yellow. I don't know where I want to put them though. Up top, maybe down here. I think down there. You know what? I don't like where that get well is. So I'm going to fool around with it a bit more. Turn the camera off, fool around with it. Put the get well where I want. Put the butterfly where I want. And then I'll show you the finished card. Okay, so this is the card. I'm just going to add, I did add a bow to it. I'm going to put uh, some embellishments on it. I did find a spot for the Get Well soon and the butterfly up there in that corner. I think it added a nice little touch to that. Now I decided in my sample I used these ones. They match the new one colors for this year. But I decided I wanted to put some bling down on the bottom of the basket as well, not just on the Get Well. So I decided to go with these ones instead. I'm just going to put some small ones around the get well. I guess I should have done that first before I stuck them on. But This is a bit of a fiddly card, but it turns out so pretty. And I think you can use it with so, so many um, stamp sets that you might have. You can use it for lots of different things can come out of this basket too even. There, I think that's pretty. Now I'm going to put a couple just along around here just to add a little bit of sparkle. And there we go. That's our card. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope everybody is staying safe. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos. And we will catch you next time. Please subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified each